War is a question of weapons. Ours against theirs. And the answer is planning and production. Work in the laboratories and at the drawing boards, turning ideas into possibilities. Work in the foundries and the machine shops, turning those possibilities into facts. But all our secret weapons have not been offensive weapons. Our biggest problems were concerned with invasion, with supplying a great army across the channel. Planning and production gave birth to the vast scheme known as Mulberry. In this great undertaking, a thousand problems were solved by extensive planning. And by production, the whole enterprise became a fact in the astonishing short time of six months. And with Mulberry came Pluto. Men and women had worked for years on Pluto and although they had no idea of the ultimate purpose of their task, they did their work with care and accuracy because they had absolute faith in the planning behind the scheme. And then, after D-Day, the scheme became fact. Pipelines leading across Britain to the coast. Pipelines unwinding like thread from giant drums onto the bed of the sea to carry oil to the armies on the continent. And because of the planning and production of Mulberry and Pluto, the Allied forces swept across Europe, fueled and supplied. But Hitler wasn't the only enemy. The weather could be a friend or a deadly foe. The RAF was losing good planes and good men, not because of enemy action, but because of fog. And so came Fido. Heat evaporates the water vapour, which makes up fog. So Fido consisted of gallons and gallons of fuel burning in pipes arranged around the runway. So much heat was set up that the fog banks were dispersed. And so the planes came in from thick fog to land in the clear. Mulberry, Pluto, Fido. But these weapons were not weapons of force and wars can only be won by the application of total force. And so planning and production worked to turn out weapons which would apply the maximum amount of concentrated force. The final answer was 10-ton Tessie, 22,000 pounds of HE in one bomb. Because of the size of this weapon, each Lancaster can only carry one. Even then, the machine has to be specially modified. A second's error on release, and the bomb would fall many yards off target. So a special release gear had to be designed to act instantaneously. The first appearance of 10-ton Tessie was at Bielefeld Viaduct. This carried a vital rail route into the Ruhr. After a few smaller bombs, the monster went down. The feature of the big bomb is the crater it makes before it goes off. Watch the left-hand corner of the white puff of smoke. The bomb makes its crater, and then... And here is the result. Although not a direct hit, many yards of the viaduct have been destroyed. The Nazi world is in ruins, but the Far East War goes on. And there too, victory will be achieved not only by the efforts of Allied fighting men, but also by Allied planning and production. And it is with this thought in our minds that we say farewell to the beautiful islands of Japan. This is a helicopter. It's the outcome of all those fantastic windmills and autogyros that one used to see drifting about before the war. 
In the autogyro, the horizontal vanes were driven by the air stream from the usual kind of prop. But in the helicopter, there's no prop, and the engine drives the vanes direct. And all movements of the aircraft are controlled by altering the pitch of the vanes. The little rotor on the tail prevents the body from swinging around under the torque. The helicopter looks like being the small man's plane of the future. It can do practically anything. Hovering is a speciality. Well, that's one new way of getting about. Here's another. This sheep was just sitting around, minding its own business, when... Actually, it was really quite safe and sound. It's just the latest way of picking up passengers. The first experiments were made with a sheep, just in case it didn't work. But it did. And so here's the first aerial hitchhiker. And here he is, being hauled aboard. You see, the system is foolproof and absolutely safe. I can say things like that, I'm only the commentator. But the real flying development of the last few years is the jet. This is the original squirt, the prototype of the Gloucester jet. Since this plane was built, many improved types of jet have been completed. And jets have been on ops with very good results. They achieved special distinction in the battle against the flying bombs. You know, when you're not flying in this, I suppose you could always use it as a hoover. And here she goes, 